So Tom, Pat, thanks for joining us again. No problem at all. Nice to see you again. Hey, good, good. Several minutes on. Here we are. So uh, the Uprise Pro is the first of three shoes that you're going to show us today. And just chatting about this beforehand, it was quite cool discussing kind of what it is. It's basically like something that's suitable for crack climbing, trad climbing, edging. So what was what term do we use here? Tredging or tracking or something? It, I mean, really, like all you've got to get your into your head on this shoe is that it's it's essentially a high performing flat shoe. So it's something which is really, really good on edging. So it's like, it's super stiff. Um, it's about as stiff a shoe that you'll find anywhere in terms of really standing on very, very small edges. But it's also got in the feature and sort of the design of it, um, more of a sort of a trad, trad shoe design that, you know, Velcro closure over essentially what is a mock um, and this big um, uh, sort of rollover of uh, rubber on the top um, over the toe patch area. But what's unique about this one in particular compared to any other uh, shoe out there is that this is all one piece. So what you often see with any of the crack climbing shoes or track climbing shoes is this will just be a single piece which is stuck on afterwards. Whereas this one is one piece so it cannot peel on the edge of the rand. It's a really annoying durability issue that no one ever seems to sort out, whereas it's fully solved in this shoe. And I've tested these out for months and months now and tried to destroy them. And they're just indestructible in that sense. Um, and because they're a really stiff shoe as well, when it comes to kind of like the crack climbing stuff that I'm really interested in, they perform absolutely amazing. Then I'm nearly gonna, well, I'm gonna say it. They basically feel like they're a cheating shoe. They're that good on that stuff. Now we're talking, Tom. Now we're talking. No, and I don't like to say that it's like cheating, but it kind of is. We'll have to get an algorithm on the UKC logbooks to account for their existence. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely. I mean, a lot of the things I've been trying over the last six months in these shoes have felt uh, quite a bit easier, which is great because I love it when grades feel easier. Hey, having just come back to climbing after what feels like a long winter, uh, I must admit. If anything makes anything feel soft for the grade, I want to be a part of that right now. Um, I mean, again, it counts for like a large proportion as well of the British public. I think that actually want some, well, want something not only that makes everything feel a bit easier, but you know, you go up to places like Stanage on a sort of weekend, and you know, a lot of people crack climbing. Um, you know, a lot of people just like actually after something that provides again like relatively flat and supportive base through which to just do a load of climbing really so i know there's a performance aspect to this but it seems like it's actually going to suit quite a broad audience yeah i would say it's um another all-rounder all-day shoe that they've got a decent sort of performance element to it um and what's really nice about it is that it's stiff all the way through the you know the sole of the shoe so you can spend all day climbing in it um but it will work really well on any edging whether you're you know gritstone edging in the quarries uh same game for limestone like i would definitely use this shoe um as my choice in the line for like limestone edging because again it's just so stiff and good on the edging i suspect there's a lot of people actually quite excited about this as a result of that because not wishing to name any other climbing shoes that are no longer available in the market today but you know like that sort of stiff edging performance shoe is definitely one that is lusted after by certain groups within the british climbing public yeah yeah and and i spent a lot of time on the feedback part of the shoe going through the edging and going not stiff enough not stiff enough can't stand on smaller holes like again and again and i think the shoe de developers were surprised at how stiff we actually need proper good stiff shoes to be, but they're there now, so it's great. So this is obviously, I think you alluded to at one point, it's like a trad styled mock, which leads us quite nicely on to the next shoe that we have, I think. Yeah, this is the new mock, or it's called the Jewel, which was developed initially by Tamoa again as a speed shoe, super, super light. They've taken a lot of the rubber off the front and they've changed it from the old style leather shoe into a synthetic. So there's no stretch in it. So it's one of those shoes you put on and it's, yeah, it's, it's almost fits like a slipper. It's, you know, as, a, as an evening slipper. 
<laughs> I mean, they, super comfy, but yes, a really good training shoe. One of the major drawbacks, I think, of the previous version, I mean, it's kind of a drawback, but actually kind of pro and a con, uh, was they gave quite a lot, which was great for sort of comfort because it meant that you could, you know, like wear them really all day, couldn't you? I mean, again, they just keep sort of cranking. But there was a tipping point to that where they kind of felt like they sort of kept giving. And then I guess with slippers as well, if they do give a little too much, they start feeling a little bit boaty, don't they? And so I'd imagine that this helps to get around that. It does, yeah. And that's, I think, the whole idea behind it is, yeah, is to get away from that stretch. So it's one of those shoes you can just put on. Once you've got your sizing right in it, that's it. You know, it's never going to change. So. And and it's another thing that's really good about um, having a synthetic mock is that often you'll, like, straight out of the box, these are just insanely comfortable. You know, you, even if you thought normal mocks were comfortable, this is even more comfortable than that. But you can buy it at a size which is you know the comfortable size and not then expect it to bag out further from there so basically whatever you get out of the box on you know week one will feel the same in week 12 which is nice because you're not doing that journey of like oh kind of tight to feels great to oh now it's too baggy it's really awkward by if you've never worn a mock before uh, actually buying them with that in mind because you don't know how tight to go to begin with because of where you'll end up at the end of it. And I mean, having used mocks as well before, I think, you know, it's interesting because I've used mocks on almost every style of climbing. I've used them for like bouldering on different rock types. I've used them sport climbing. I've used them trad climbing on both single pitch and multi pitch. And there's not many shoes that actually can take you that range of places, is there? Mm. Uh, totally, I think, yeah. It's it's just, yeah, I think, yeah, all day comfy shoe you want. This is it now. It's, I think, yeah, it's taken, almost taken the mock to the, just a little, little next level, really. So, and that leads us on to, I mean, another all rounder that you've got within the range that's coming out again imminently. Um, do you want to tell us a bit more about this? Yeah, this is the Lyra. It's uh, an, all, an all round performance shoe. It's marked as an all round performance shoe. With the, it's got the soft RS rubber on it, the same as the, going back to the flagship that we looked at earlier, the same rubber, but a single sole unit. So it's a little bit stiffer, but yeah, it's a super comfy. It's a lined synthetic shoe, the, the Z closure system on it. So it gives you that chance. You've got the, a big Velcro, a Velcro patch here to crank it down however you like. And yeah, I think a really good all round performance shoe. Again, one of the other things to say here is, I. I don't know about the two of you, well, I probably do, but when I go out climbing now, I tend to go out with like a preposterous array of climbing shoes. Uh, but I have had to rein that in ever so slightly since having a child amongst many other factors, simply because space has been a paramount. I've got so much baby-based paraphernalia that I need to actually slim down. And so something like the Lyra sounds perfect within that scenario because basically you want to have one shoe that is going to give you the best opportunity to make the most of edging, smearing, and, you know, a bit of everything. Yeah, and I think so, yeah. You can, outdoors and indoors as well, I think it's one of those shoes you can go bouldering indoors, you can use it on the roots indoors. So, And then, yeah, you're out for the weekend. Perfect shoe for you. One thing we didn't cover on these is the sort of fit and the sort of last. I know each probably varies a little, but uh, where do you think each sits on the sort of um, either narrow or sort of medium or neutral to wide end of the spectrum? I mean, yeah, these are these are fairly neutral shoe. I think they're, there's just the one size. There's not a low volume or a high volume. There's the single single range, so they're a fairly fairly neutral fit. And yeah, and then these again, exactly the same. A little bit wider across the, the forefoot, but yeah, they're a fairly neutral fit for uh, no low volume again, just a single. Yeah, I was going to say, like, uh, I mean, both, both these two shoes here fit, uh, whilst I'm switching around so you can actually see the colours, um, they fit in a very similar way to me. Um, I, I don't know, I, have a, I, I would say I have what I would class as a very normal foot. So it doesn't feel like a narrow or a wide shoe. It's almost, just, you know, the same as any other shoe that I put my foot into. Um, and it's, 
yeah, just just middle of the road. I think you could call that really. Well, again, I think probably good to end on a similar note to the one that we ended on previously, which was um, it'd be nice when we can run things like boot demos or where we can go back into shops and actually try these on again, because um, all of this talk aside, there's nothing quite like putting your foot inside them and all of this stuff making sense with it immediately, isn't it? Ah, oh, yeah, we can't wait to get back out on the road again. I think there's one quick point with the whole range of these unparalleled shoes is they're all vegan. That's interesting to know. It's a good move. It's a really good move, yeah. They've gone, I think that's one of the reasons why they've gone through these synthetic, they've developed all these synthetic shoes. And yeah, they're all, they're all vegan. So yeah, we're really super psyched to get people to try them on. on cool, the well, let's hope that that is sometime soon then, Pat. Oh yeah, I'm desperate. Desperate to get out of this warehouse. Well, Pat, Tom, thanks for joining us again and hopefully see you in reality and not via Zoom sometime soon. Yeah, nice and right. Brilliant. Cheers, Rob. Bye.